Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver hey guys, now. Hey, it's RoadRoo.com. I have a silver delivery update. It is December. We always love December. It is a silver delivery month. You know, there are fallacies and misconceptions and... Um, I don't know. Some people just think that the COMEX is a freely traded market where, hey, if you need physical silver, let's go on to the COMEX. That's where the price is determined and we can get some physical silver. 99.9%. Um, That's 99.9. .9. I'll add another nine. 99.99% .99 of all trades are banks trading back and forth to each other. They aren't real trades. They aren't done for any specific purpose other than to create fake volume to move the price one way or the other and then slosh it back and forth. There's very, 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 very few, like 0.1% of the people who are on the COMEX actually have a desire to take delivery of their COMEX um, silver. <clears throat> Everybody else is a bank and they take delivery one month and then they give it back the next month and then they ship it in and out of warehouses. The real action, as Ted Butler has pointed out, is on SLV. If you have 50,000 shares, theoretically, you can take delivery. In actuality, what happens is if you ask to take delivery from someone like JP Morgan, they will close your accounts. That's exactly what they did to me. And I was just floating the idea. I didn't have enough money to do it, but I was like, okay, they, you know, they were trying to get my business because I had a bank account at, at uh, JP Morgan. This is J.P. Morgan, by the way. Um, and I said, hey, I'll give you my business. If, if I buy SLV shares, and, and the broker's like, yeah, 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 we do that. I said, okay, I want to take delivery if I buy 50,000. I was thinking, get a bunch of people and get 50,000 shares. I want to take delivery. And he's like, you can't do that. I said, well, yeah, you can, and people do it, and it's in the prospectus, and, and you know, you're in charge of the inventory. You know all that silver's there. He goes, let me check on it. Two days later, they shut down all my accounts. No explanation, no excuse. That's what we're fighting, my friends. If you, hey, if you want physical silver, call up Andy Sheckman at Miles Franklin. Send him an email, Andy, A-N-D-Y at milesfranklin.com. Now's a great time. Although I think silver could easily go farther down because here's what happened last time it was the delivery month was last March. So let's look what happened. The beginning of March, Silver was pretty strong, 2670. During the delivery month, and it was a it was the biggest of the year, during the delivery month, the price of silver went down $2.50, 10%. Why? Because banksters had to deliver silver and oh by the way, they don't didn't have it when they want to buy it, they want the price lower, so they send off their derivative uh rigger, a guy named Vincent Viola who is in charge of Virtu Financial, the unknown, untalked about entity that controls all trades. And they had them slam the price down $2.50. They aren't required to deliver till the end of the month. Till the end of the month, everything must be delivered. So we could see another situation where the price is slammed down um, during the month of December. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the good guys could click the mouse and drive it up to 30 and over 30. I don't know. The key is, do you have the silver in your own possession? What price you're going to pay for it, uh, you know, if they slam it down much further, silver's at 28, uh, no, that was the high. Silver today is at around $22.75. You know, you're going to pay four or five bucks for a premium. It's insane. It's insane. But let me tell you what's going on. What I think is a little misleading as far as uh, silver deliveries. Um, according to this, now I, it's hard to tell because of the shenanigans that go on at the end of the month versus how many contracts are stood for delivery and then how many are rolled over on the next couple of days. I like to wait a couple of days, to kind of figure out. And then within two or three days of, of actual delivery happening or the notifications being filed, then you're going to know pretty much how much is going to be delivered over the month. Um, we're looking at probably the second right now, according to this. This is Wall Street Silver, guys. Uh, they got this from Ditch the Deep State. Um, 
it could be accurate, but at the same time, you got to wait a couple days to find out. Right now, it looks like it'll be more than 47 million ounces. And don't forget, at any time during the month, anybody can come in and, and take delivery of huge amounts of silver, buy the contract right there, and walk away with it. So it's not, you know, it wasn't just that they held it towards the end of the month. You can buy a delivery for today and do that as well. Oh, that's not often done. I don't know why. But here's the problem with, you know, yes, it will be the second largest delivery month. And let me show you where that uh, info is right here. This is the CME data for silver notifications. This is the total deliveries. These are uh, contracts. So it's 5,000 times. These are 5,000 ounce contracts. So in December, the previous December, it was 9,000. So 45, 46 million ounces, which was pretty steep. And then you have for this year, the, the, the steepest is March. We all remember all the drama with March around uh, Jeffrey Christian and um, Jeff Curry, Goldman Sachs and uh, uh, CPM group saying, oh, my God, oh, my God, silver is in short supply. And everybody's like, well, what's going on here? Um, that was the largest delivery month. December will be just as large. But here's the problem. And I've been screaming this for a long time. Where are those deliveries going? Who's making the deliveries and who are they going to? Are these really banks losing metal to to silver buyers or is it something else and you can see right here these who this is the first day 2,541 contracts were delivered of course <clears throat> um, JP Morgan customer account was the largest supplier the stopper the supplier of silver but look at this there's only one two three four entities that took silver in Number one, Goldman Sachs. Number two, Morgan Stanley. And number three, J.P. Morgan customers. So does it really matter if it's 50 million ounces going out the door if they're the same people are taking it coming in the door? This is a con. The whole thing's a freaking con. It is a shell game of silver going in one warehouse, out the other. And they don't even move the silver, obviously. You can't. There's not enough trucks. So what do they do? A little paper receipt. Here you go, J.P. Morgan. It's all a con. There are no audits of these warehouses. Nobody knows how much silver is left. I'll guarantee you all the silver is spoken for. And probably multiple times. They're rehypothecating silver, meaning multiple owners of the silver. So how much silver do we have left for this month to deliver? It's right here. So we have 2,500 already delivered. Another 9,484 will most likely be delivered, I believe. So closer to 55. 50 to 55. Now, again, who knows with the flip-flopping cash settlements and shit like that. Let's just stick with 50,000. It's going to be around 50,000 ounces delivered. But what does it matter if it's going from in one door and out the other? Look, look at the history of these assholes. Of Goldman Sachs. Let's just look at Goldman Sachs, what they have done. Remember, they were the ones in distress in February. In February, silver... They got their guy, Jeff Curry. I think I, we have that here. Jeff Curry, there he is, saying, getting on the news because silver was about to hit $30. Oh, my God, heaven forbid, hit, silver hit $30. Jeff Curry screaming, no, 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 you don't understand the silver market. The shorts are the ETFs. He was saying that silver that goes into the ETFs are being shorted on the comics, which is completely illegal under the the, the Black Rock Prospectus. No, that is a, it's either a lie, which I don't even think it's a lie. I think it's an excuse they give to the naked shorts. And Goldman obviously was the, was the naked short. That's why he, they had to throw him on the halftime report at uh, CNBC. Criminals, these guys are criminals. But look, so he was screaming and yelling, no, 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 don't buy silver. And look what Goldman had to do back then which is right here. They had to pony up 2,900 contracts, about 15 million ounces. No wonder he was freaking out. That's the other guy who was freaking out. He was freaking out because they had to pay up the silver. So he, they literally, and this is the chief market analyst for precious metals from Goldman Sachs. They literally called up their contacts at CNBC to talk their book, which is completely illegal also. Where's the CFTC? 
They're criminals. They're run cover for these assholes. And Rustin Benham came on and said, we had to tamp down the price of silver. Because Goldman Sachs is going to lose their ass. It's insane what goes on. So you here you see Goldman Sachs, they had to pony up in their house account, mind you, 15 million ounces. Now, they're one of the bigger uh, takers of silver, this time 610 million, but it's in their customer account. And the strange thing is, and this is the insanity, you add up these numbers and the bottom line, 360, 291, and 250, that comes up to right around six 600 contracts also. So even in the customer bank accounts, it's in one door, out the other. It's all a paper game. I don't know if anything's done on the comics. It's insane what happens. Insane. This is the silver market. And again, here are the names. Who were the people who stopped? Meaning they gave the money. They were supplying the, uh, I mean the silver. They were supplying the silver. A, a new name, Jump Trading. I don't even know what that is. Yet. I'll, I'll dig into that. They had to pony up 40 contracts. That's probably painful for them. I don't know if they're, I don't even know who they are. I'll check that down though. But the, the same old names, Credit Suisse, who was supposed to be out of the silver market. Wells Fargo, who we know leases massive amounts from JP Morgan. Scotia Capital, who's supposed to be out of the silver market. Bank of Mayor Security, who leases massive amounts of silver from J.P. Morgan to put into SLV. And then you have J.P. Morgan customers taking 1,207 contracts. But they, they stopped it. They gave that silver to the delivery, but 995 were customers also. It's just, it's a revolving shell game. Nobody knows how much silver is in play, really. Some say it's 2 billion ounces of potential silver. That's the number Ted comes up with, with all the silver in the in the thing, the big silver, the silver in the ETFs and stuff. Some people say six billion ounces, which means all of the silver that collectors have and the silver uh, silverware and fillings and everything else, probably around six billion ounces, is available. And the rest of the sixty billion ounces that that's been mined in hu human history, supposedly, is gone. Is shredded into little tiny pieces. Is thrown away. Has been lost. You drop a dime, a silver dime, drop a dime before 1965, and poof, that silver is gone forever because you won't find it. Some lucky guy will find it in 10 years and say, oh, I have a million dollars worth of silver in my hand with a dime. <laughs> so it's a shell game. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's a shell game. Who allowed bankers who have the license to print money for free to be the largest, you know, take up 99% of the trades in commodities? Hello, America, you dumb mother pluckers. We did it to ourselves. So that's where we are right now. Again, I want to call your attention to that time, uh, March time frame, Jeff Curry out there, uh, Jeffrey Christian out there. This is a quote from Jeffrey Christian. Silver price manipulation is okay if rigged down so a dealer's customers can buy cheap silver. That is a direct quote from this this too paid idiot. I can call him that because he's called me worse. He's just not smart, and he's beyond criminal. He should be taken down with the banking cabal because he helped facilitate their con. Same with the CDC or the CFTC regulators at the moment, Rustin Benham and Don DeBerry Stump. That I love the quote that she said. We cannot allow free markets to happen or people will lose their 401ks. I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what she said when the silver crisis was happening. Of course, silver is a crisis. It's going to take down a criminal system. Watch the video I just posted with me and my RV. I just posted on the Road to Ruta. Go to Road to Ruta, the YouTube channel. Click subscribe, by the way. Right now, go down there and click subscribe. But check out my last video that I talk about. Don DeBerry Stump, and what happens if silver is allowed to freely trade? What happens if a too big to fail bank fails? And what and how we need that to happen? We cannot keep kicking the can. It means more and more control by the bad guys. 
They love it. They've got us under their thumb and they're just twisting it because we're too afraid to stop the manipulation. We're too afraid not to bail out a bank. We're too afraid to let free markets reign. Why? Because the whole system will fall apart. But that's what we need. That's the creative destruction event that humanity needs. Otherwise, we get what we deserve. You sit there and you look at these pedophile, criminal politicians and say, how did we get here? How did we allow all this stuff to happen? How could it possibly be? The number one reason is that we're too afraid to let free markets reign. Free markets are the road to freedom. I've been, I sang about it. I wrote a song about it and I'm screaming it. Only free markets can free us. And yes, everybody will lose everything they have in the old system. It's the only way. It's the only way to move forward. But the biggest thing they're going to lose is their debt. And debt's the biggest problem globally. Debt, debt, debt. Debt to infinity, as Ruta was writing in the sand in 1981. To infinity. Truthfully, that's what they're doing behind the scenes. They don't need to tell you how much fiat money they print. Are you kidding? It's all a con. What they have to do is rig the foreign exchange markets which the Exchange Stabilization Fund does out of the basement of the U.S. Treasury and the Fed New York. If you can rig the foreign exchange, which are floating markets, they float against each other. People tell me, oh, picks, you know, look at the dollar's going to weaken because they're printing all so much money. The dollar's not going to do anything. It's measured up against other fiat currencies that they're printing just as much as, but also the, the derivatives of foreign exchange trades is what controls the price of the dollar and that's a click of a mouse for U.S. Treasury and the Fed. A click of a mouse. Strong dollar policy. Remember that in the 1990s? The strong dollar policy. What did it mean? More market rigging. Tim Geithner was the guy back then. He talked about how they invented that. When he was on the desk, the trading desk of the New York Fed, he invented the strong dollar policy. What was the strong dollar policy? Blah, blah, blah. Talk about strong dollar and rig gold and silver markets. That was the essence of the strong dollar policy. How do you rig it? With derivatives. You get enough banks trading back and forth to each other. Boom, 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 boom. J.B. Morgan. Look at J.B. Morgan customer. 1,207 contracts delivered. 995 contracts requested for delivery. <laughs> it's insane. And these numbers change each month. They're just passing this shit back and forth. It's insanity. Again, oh, oh, big news, big news. Today's the last day for the sweepstakes. Last day. If you're not in the sweepstakes, go to roadtoreer.com, click on sweepstakes. We're giving away $5,000 of Theta and Theta Fuel. Today is the 30th of November. If you're listening to this after that, it's too late. You wait for the next sweepstakes. We're giving away $5,000 of Theta and $5,000 of Theta Fuel. You don't have to do anything other than fill out a form. If you want more entries, you can join the private road or you can renew and you get 20 entries. 20 entries and that's that increases your odds pretty well. But the last day is today, November 30th. So make sure you go to roadrewer.com, check out the video and click on the sweepstakes form. It'll tell you how we go about this. We're having a third party picket because I believe in decentralization. Trust is gone. We will never trust anybody anymore. Even on Road to Ruta, don't trust me. We're getting a third party to do all the, the legal stuff and, and pick the winner for us. So you know it's real. Figure out how to do it on a blockchain soon. <laughs> anyway, go to RoadToRuda.com. Join the Road to Ruta. Find out what's really going on in the world. This is Bix Weir. I'll talk to you later.